Bro, where were you yesterday? I was uh, I was indisposed at the uh, – look, all right? I, I work a lot. I do a lot of jobs. I got the Mid-Atlantic Championship podcast. I got the Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare. I try to cajole Tom into doing shows. I've got to do double the work. I feel as though every day when I come on here, plus I have a shoot job and a family. It's hard out there trying to dad. You know that right now, trying to do this show with two kids climbing all over you. You push yourself to the limit. You burn the candle at both ends. And sometimes Mother Nature says, hey, you need to get some rest. So I got some rest. That's what happened. Well, can you have Mother Nature text me next time and let me know? You, you don't, you don't, you may not want to anger Mother Nature. You never know what could happen, especially when you're out there at the beach. Be careful. Be careful what you ask for. You don't want Mother Nature just to be rolling up on you to telling you things like that. Usually when she does, it's not good for your environment. Well, as noted, this year's SummerSlam will be taking place at the Amway Center, Orlando, Florida. And, of course, they had been attempting to get a building in Atlantic City. Not happening. So, SummerSlam is at the Amway Center. And it's a very interesting because there's not going to be fans there. I, I guess they could just change their mind tomorrow and put tickets on sale. But at this moment... They have, they have rented out the building. They have got all the production people on the way. It's going to be a bigger production than usual, obviously, because it's in a bigger building. And the question is, why? I mean, I don't care. But, I mean, it's interesting because we learned a long time ago. I learned this in the 90s. I learned it watching ECW. And I learned it from shows that I attended, that I wrestled on. If you run a show and you sell 250 tickets, if those 250 people cram into a building, a tiny building that barely fits 250 people, that show is going to look like the hottest ticket in town. If you sell those same 250 tickets and you run in the Tacoma Dome, which we actually did a show at the Tacoma Dome. It wasn't the actual Tacoma Dome, but there's like a, a building next door that seats the, maybe 3,000 or something. Something like that. But it's still like cavernous. You got 250 people in there or whatever. It looks like, boy, this is the lamest ticket in town. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I do know that these performance center shows, I mean, sometimes they're raucous. Sometimes they're not. But if you have the same exact number of performance center students and they're sitting there in a giant empty Amway center, I I'm not sure how this is a positive. I mean, it's probably going to look a lot better in a lot of ways, but it's going to be empty. So anyway, that's their plan. I know they want to run a lot of shows in the Amway center or wherever they can they can book it out. Obviously, when they can get fans, they're going to do it. It's lickety split, as they say. But this is an interesting decision. And. That's where SmackDown's going to emanate from. We'll see how it looks. Yeah, acoustically, that's my biggest question: is how do you how do you make it sound good? You know, how do you how do you fill the sound of a building like that? You know, looks wise, they can make it look great with all of the things that they can do inside of an arena. You know, with that setup, you know, I, visually it can be fantastic. Uh, sound wise, I question how good it can be, but maybe they are betting on that they'll be able to get a low capacity of legitimate fans. I don't know how that can happen, um, but at the very least, they're probably going to beg Fragon's friends and family and spread them out the arena. I guess that's the goal, unless they think that they something will happen by them where they'll be able to get real people inside that building and maybe some real revenue. I, I don't I don't understand why you'd want to go in there other than I really, I just really, right now, I don't know why you'd want to go in there. Without a guarantee of fans, why go inside of a building like that when you have been able to cut costs? And at this point, everybody is used to the presentation. Well, I do know that when I watch NXT and AEW, I mean, it is much more fun to watch AEW at Daly's Place, which is significantly bigger than the WWE Performance Center. But at the same time, Daly's Place is a very unique-looking building, and if you watch those AEW shows, I mean, last night was another example. When they're live, they're nowhere near as exciting as when they're taped. 
Those taped shows, I don't know what kind of crowd sweetening they do, but it's not noticeable crowd sweetening. I didn't notice they were doing crowd sweetening until about the fourth cycle of live, crowd's not very good. Taped, crowd's great. Live, not very good. Taped, crowd's great. And it suddenly hit me like, they're doing something on these taped shows. Maybe WWE can do the same thing. I mean, as long as they shoot and they don't show the empty building, they get plenty of their performance center people around ringside, you do a little bit of sound sweetening. I mean, it could be a big improvement. Maybe it will be. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But it is an interesting decision to, especially when you see how much money they made just running at the performance center. I mean, maybe they feel that, well, telling people we're going to run in an arena is going to get some more people to buy that WWE Network to buy SummerSlam. I think the number of people that would do it for that is like zero, especially with no fans. But maybe they figure that's going to help, so we'll see how it looks.